In, um, if you've been here last time, uh, the roundtable discussion is a more interactive discussion. So it's not just one way where we talk and you listen. Now, uh, the roundtable discussion, as the name suggests, is something that we want to understand what you are thinking because as investors or potential investors, from our side, we will also need to understand what it is that concerns you, what are the challenges that you're facing. So the topic for today is pretty easy, it's called Big Data. So, uh, and Mr. Nanjing, let me give you a brief introduction to Mr. Nanjing. Mr. Nanjing is the managing partner for Qing D Labs uh, in Beijing, which is a, uh, a new incubation center, uh, research center, uh, under Tsinghua University as well. So I'll let you introduce later on. But in terms of the, uh, the flow, what we're doing later on is uh, we'll be discussing certain points. Uh, we will also be asking you initially right now, what do you want to hear first? So from the floor, I'd like to understand what kind of topics revolving around big data would you want to hear? Any people, any person would like to suggest anything that you want to listen to? Anything? Nothing yet? Okay, that's fine. If you can think about anything, well, it, it, it was it was less stressful probably last time. Uh, the um, I have a few questions, of course. Uh, we'll be talking about big data, the challenges about as an investor, how do we see big data projects? Uh, what are the fake ones? What are the real ones? Uh, how do we actually decide on whether this is a workable solution or a workable kind of a project that can be invested inside it? So a little bit about introduction, about what Ching D Labs does. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, the Ching, Ching Data, uh, we have a Ching D Lab. Um, it, the full name is the Qinghua uh, Data Innovation Center. Um, in Chinese, it's Qinghua Shuli Chongxin Jidi. Uh, it, it is a uh, lab uh, actually run by, uh, we have an industry association also under Qinghua, uh, called the Qinghua Big Data Industry Association. So we run this lab and we got also got some in, uh, investment from HASPA. And, uh, and this association is under Qinghua uh, Data Science, Institute of Data Science. So what we do over there is we try to build an ecosystem around the big data. So we evolve uh, evolve like a school uh, in a university like Qinghua and other universities as well also involve a lot of uh, uh, industry partners including big data companies also traditional companies are looking into transitioning into a data driven uh, business model so um, this is what we try to do so we, we do we try to do innovation not just uh, from the like startup companies uh, standpoint also from innovation within the big companies as well. So this is uh, the point of we, we try to build that uh, lab. So, uh, and around that, uh, we, uh, we found there's a very uh, strong need for capital. So, and a lot of uh, funds also like the financial institution, they are looking for uh, very good uh, companies to invest. So they want to work with us for uh, uh, you know, to look into investment opportunities into big data companies. Uh, that's why we started Qing, Qing Data Capital. I'm the, uh, I'm the founding partner, also managing partner for that, uh, for that platform. So right now we are raising a uh, in angel fund, uh, focusing on investing uh, seed and uh, angel round uh, uh, investments. And uh, we are about to close it like end of uh, June. And also at the same time, we are uh, this fund we work with Taspa. They will be co-managing the fund with us. They also will be our uh, limited partner. They will they will be one of the cornerstone limited partner. And also we are we are looking to uh, setting up an uh, industry fund. Also that that one we are thinking about working with uh, Qinghua Holding, and uh, uh, we want to invest in some uh, later stage companies. We have a few very good companies. Uh, we have the opportunity to invest in them. And we also can help them to grow their business faster. So, uh, this is uh, something also working right now. So, uh, going forward, we hope uh, we hope to invest in uh, companies all across their life cycle, uh, from the very beginning, and uh, you know, uh, growth stage, also later stage, even uh, doing some uh, like uh, buyout as well. So, this is the long-term growth. So, anyway, so. Um, the main uh, the main focus will be always in big data, 
So we'll be big data technology, uh, big data applications, and also big data, we call it, uh, some big data ecosystem companies, some, something like uh, some media companies, some uh, uh, like uh, consultancy company, they always, they focus on uh, big data, what work, can work, work with uh, giving big data solution for, uh, for traditional companies. So that kind of company we also interested in investing. So. Thank you very much. Um, for those who, yes, uh, how big is the fund? Uh, the current, the, the uh, Andrew fund is, uh, is not very big. It's uh, 50 million to service. Uh, we hope we hope for uh, we we are we are also working uh, working with the local government to set up more angel funds. All of these angel funds will be around 100 million RMB, and uh, the industry fund we just mentioned uh, it will be somewhere around uh, like 500 million, and uh, we were investing like around B e or C type of company, and um, that will be starting. Uh, starting size. In the end, we hope to uh, have a fund about size of maybe 10 billion RMB. Uh, we will do later stage. We will do a buyout. We also wanted to, to have a have a fund of fund to uh, basically to set up more angel fund. For the angel fund, we wanted to uh, to do like a um, local fund with all the local government. Like right now, we are talking with Zhongshan. We are talking with uh, Foshan. We're talking also with Tianjin and uh, some other places. Uh, hopefully, it will be uh, with uh, Shenzhen, Shanghai as well. We also want to set up some uh, industry-focused uh, uh, big data farm. For example, big data application in like uh, in in IoT maybe. So big data application in e-commerce and uh, uh, that's that will be something co some cooperation with uh, like listed company, public company. They are they they are interesting. Uh, finding the good future technology, so we are talking to some of those uh, companies as well. One of the things, um, Mr. Hanjing is, is um, he's actually a resident judge for my Pitch Perfect event. So if you guys have been following me, uh, you know that I have an investor funding platform called Pitch Perfect Event, where we actually gauge and check different kind of projects coming in from all around the world, uh, whether they want to come into Hong Kong or whether to China. So. That's one thing. Let's jump straight in to some of the topics that most investors will be looking at. Challenges of how we evaluate big data kind of projects. Now from our end here, both of us investors around here, we get a lot of projects coming in from all around the world. Uh, probably more in China from my side. Uh, I get pretty much like in different countries as well. Right? People who actually know me. So, uh, and people are saying, hey, these are big data or whatever. Uh, one of the challenges that I see is most of these so-called projects, big data projects, and one of the key project, uh, key challenges for an investor is most of these companies, they are startups. And when they say big data, it, it's something that rings a bell, an alarm in my head. Because you're just a new company, uh, a fairly young company, like one year or two years old, and you're saying you've got a big data company. So my first question, or how I evaluate, was pretty simple. I will be gauging in a few things. How you collect data, that's number one. Uh, number two, how you actually analyze the data. Because the duplication and analyzing whether these are real or not real kind of data, that's important. And number three, that's actually the most important, what are you doing with the data? Are you selling the data, or are you using it for something else? So these are the three main points that I will be pretty much on a preliminary schedule or preliminary kind of a oversight to look into what these projects are. Is this something that you're looking at when new projects come into your side? Yeah, I, I think uh, I, I pretty much agree with whatever, whatever you said. Uh, I think for big data company, usually uh, the, the company we came across, uh, we think they are really big data company, they are also very good to invest. But usually they start, start from, you know, small data, not big data. So I totally agree with uh, uh, KPMG, you know, just said, yeah, uh, you you have to be able to analyze small data before you can do big data. If you, if you have, you know, if you can uh, improve the business, like uh, through uh, analyzing the uh, not so big data, then probably you are far away from big data. So uh, usually, just like you say, if the company just started, 
and they, they said they wanted to do big, big data, usually it's probably not a very good company to start with, yeah, because uh, um, I know a few, uh, I, I gave you some, a few, few examples, right? Uh, one of the company I invest in, yeah, in Shenzhen, they do big data like for medical, uh, but uh, what they do, they, they, they start with uh, analyzing like one like, patient's like medical data, not like, okay, I'm analyzing 10,000 of uh, big data, but, but because they can create a 3D module from one patient CT image, uh, so the, 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 the hospital is you know, willing to work with them because they provide value to them, right? So although they, he's actually, he doesn't know much about the medical, but uh, he, can, he can recreate the, uh, the organ structure from the, uh, from the CT scan image. So from there, he started to collect more and more data. And right now, he has a lot of data. He has uh, more than uh, maybe 50,000 patients, uh, like CT and MR image. That's a, a huge amount of data already because he has so much, so much data he can create the organ structure very accurately, which can provide uh, guidance to very experienced, you know, uh, surgeon. So that means they are really doing big data right now. But it started with a small data. So, and and I think uh, uh, there might be some company they actually have very very good technology to start with, but uh, usually the technology cannot uh, cannot work without data. Right. So you have to. Uh, find okay. Have have to find a way to collect the data, right? So um, a few companies, companies in China usually either they have or a lot of can data already, like a, you know BAT. They all have a lot of data, right? So uh, but for startup, we don't have that kind of luxury. So there's some company. One of the company right now is already very big, not a startup anymore. Uh, their valuation, the latest valuation, I think it's more than three billion RMB, and. Uh, what they do, they, have, you, they use crawler, right? They use crawler to crawl all over the internet to collect all the user-generated content. But once, uh, they, they, they did it very early, so before everybody else is doing it, right? They, they collect a, a lot of data, and uh, then once they have a lot of data, they can do like a, a user profiling, and then they can tell the e-commerce companies that, okay, if you connect your data to my database, I can give a much uh, accurate, like user profiling, and it will give you more target, like a uh, uh, promotion. And so, a lot of the like, uh, uh, e-commerce company, all the other companies, they started connect, you know, connecting their data to his system. So right now, he actually has a lot of private data as well. So, uh, but he also started from not so big data. So I think uh, that's the thing. So you have to find a way to collect data. Uh, there are also some other company. They do very dirty work. They, for them, they they, they try to uh, scan a lot of like the uh, paperwork. And so by that way, they can also collect a lot of data. Uh, but once you have a lot of data, then you can do a lot of interesting things on it. Uh, we have one of the uh, member company of our association. They actually doing this IT system for the uh, restaurants. Uh, so when they started, they what they do? They just okay. We try to build an uh, information system for the restaurants to make their more they run more efficiently. But that's not a big deal company. But then, right now they have more than hundred hundred thousand like uh, restaurant using their system. So they have all the data, all the orders, all the transaction information, everything. They have our so so many things. They they actually can can know. Okay, if you want to open a new restaurant, I can tell you which which part of the street it should be opening and what kind of dish you should be serving because they have so many data they can analyze. So now they can they became a big data company as well. Right? So recently they just got a hundred million investment, more than hundred million investment from uh, from Da Zhong Dian Ping. So, yeah, so anyway, so I just give you a little company or what? It's a million company, it's a million company. So something similar in Hong Kong as well. yeah in Hong Kong company actually I invest in one of the Hong Kong company called uh, uh, inside robotics, right? So they they do they do like uh, geographic uh, information analysis. That's also a big uh, company. Um, they but the, the the core technology is they are image analyzing. You know, uh, we call software or maybe uh, yeah. They're so because they have that kind of capability. So once they they can analyze like small amount of data, now then right now they have they can analyze a lot of. Uh, a lot of big data as well. So 
For example, they can detect the fire, uh, you know, very accurately within, uh, with a much larger range compared to existing systems, right? And he just posted a picture on the <laughs> Facebook, he, he just, like, uh, uh, and, and also with very big accuracy, uh, very, uh, very high accuracy, right? For example, you know, when you, when you looking at, the, like, fire, like, five kilometers away, uh, as, as, uh, like, a, I don't know, a few meters, square meter fire looks probably almost like a secret but right? But how can you tell from the image you know, which one is the fire, which one is the secret, secret, it's a secret part? So that that will require a lot of analysis of images. Right? So this is, uh, yeah, I also you know, invest a little bit on, on that company too. It's a Hong Kong company. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, one of the interesting things that you just brought up was uh, Actually, I'm seeing a lot more projects coming in that revolves around medical. And, uh, and, and this area is, seems to be that everyone's talking about that. Uh, and one of the companies that I'm looking at right now, uh, they're saying that, hey, uh, I'm trying to get medical research information from patients, from doctors, and then once they get it, they get a, a trend in terms of aging sicknesses, diseases, so that the people in Harvard or somewhere else around the world can actually do research and get the data and get more accurate data coming out from it. Uh, I'm all for this kind of projects. Uh, however, the challenge is, right even before getting the data, is actually I was telling them, well, how do you actually get the data in the first place? Now, that's the, the part where I said collection. How do you collect the, the data? And he said, oh, OK, now, he's an IT guy. And he says, hey, I'm, I'm going to let all the doctors use my IT system and then he's going to put all the data, the information, the disease, the symptoms, and everything inside the system. And then at the back end, I have all the data. And I said, that's cheating. That's stealing data in the first place. Because number one, how you collect the data is very important. Because if you are asking a doctor to collect the data for you, you should be asking him to collect the right data for you to analyze and you to later on use that data for something else. So if you're saying that I'm going to give you a steak, but I'm going to take all the potatoes, I'm just focusing on all the potatoes, but I'm not focusing on this, making the steak good, then what are you doing exactly in terms of getting the right data? Because you're not telling up front to the doctor and saying, I want one, two, three, four data, and the doctor will say, hey, I don't know what you're doing, but I'll just do what, it, what I need to do for the patient inside the system. So he's not getting all the data he requires. And one of the interesting things, is in reality, doctors don't put the symptoms inside the system because for insurance purposes. So the fact is, that symptom is very critical because as for research, because he needs that data to do to give it to other people, to researchers, to actually see how these symptoms are in terms of how to find the medical causes and also solutions for it. So if he's not getting this data from the doctors, He's wasted a lot of time, a lot of effort to actually just tell people to use his IT system. So in a way, one of the really things, uh, the key things that we're looking at is how you actually collect the data. Does the person collecting the data for you, or the machine collecting the data for you, is he collecting the right data or the wrong data? Because one of the key things psychologically that I look into in, in terms of people motivation is human beings lie. Everyone lies. So the fact is, hey, are you sick? No, not really. How often are you sick? Um, yeah, one, uh, how long have you had this sickness? Um, just two days ago, where in fact it's like two years ago. So these are things that will skew the actual data. Uh, one of the things that we're looking at right now is to actually do visual recognition on people's behaviors instead of you, them telling us what it is. So people may put in surveys. One of the things, key things about collection data is how people use surveys. I don't really believe in surveys because surveys are skewed. Uh, it can be it can be inaccurate. But the most inaccurate, most accurate thing is, hey, you like yellow because you're wearing yellow. So that's one of the key things that I look at. And when we do visual recognition, uh, one of the car park solutions, commercial mode things I mentioned to you previously, was that we do recognition on actual cars, what people do. So. Uh, you say you like red, but you're driving a black Audi. So do you like red or do you like black? So 
I will believe in what you actually do in terms of behavior. So is this something that you look into as well in terms of collecting data in terms of behavior as well? Yeah, I think when, when you collect data, a lot of people come into uh, and will ask, okay, how valid is the, the data and how are you getting it legally or you know so something like that? You do a sell them or something? A lot of questions like that. I think one one of the advantage of big data is like uh, uh, usually you try to collect as much data as possible. You can collect from all different dimensions, right? Then you can draw something uh, more accurately, but not directly. You, you, I don't know if you, you for example, you if you want want to know the user behavior, uh, there's a lot of way you can. Do that for them. Uh, when you do with a website, we have cookies. So you, you know, you, they will know a lot, a lot about your habits in going online, right? Right now, we also uh, just in Beijing just made a company, but they do it. They do indoor mapping, right? So uh, they they know each and every. For them, they, they have a device. They actually just a cell phone. So with that, they have a, a app. They go into a building, a, a mall. They can figure out of, you know where all the Wi-Fi is, how hotspot is. So once once you run the app with their SDK in it, they actually know when and the, when did you go to any place. So so then they will have all your information in terms of okay where what what are the places you go, well, which like MTR you take when when you know from A to B and then uh, which bus you take away, uh, what kind of restaurant you go. Uh, they might not know exactly who you are, but uh, but they will know okay this is. A, the kind of uh, activities you do, and they will guess uh, what kind of profession you may have, and uh, and they can give you like a more precise like promotions. Could you, could you use, uh, also use biometrics? Uh, yes, you know, I think I think uh, a biometrics that means usually you need a detector, right? You need to put a for example if you scan your uh, retina, that means you I have to put a put a retina scanner in each and every place. Uh, but uh, their technology, the good part of their technology is because you have Wi-Fi almost everywhere already, right? So I don't have to know exactly who you are, but uh, I know you're you know, some kind of person already, right? So this is something very interesting because a lot of mapping companies, for example, like uh, Google Map or all those companies, they know where you go when you're outside, but when you go inside, they probably don't know. Uh, you, you, you go to which, when you, you come into this, Obvious building, they probably don't know, you know, which company you work for. But uh, with their technology, they can know exactly. You know, which floor you go to, then you will probably go to, you know, this company. You go to work out something like that. So. Yeah, interesting because um, that's another project that I've previously done as well. Uh, we try to look into is uh, commercial malls in China. So people want to know where the people are actually buying. So uh, a brand here, a jewelry brand here, wants to know where my customer actually goes, the next stop or the previous stops. Uh, you can't do it with Wi-Fi because you need ID kit. You can't do GPS indoors, uh, so which means that you have to have something extra. So like an ID kit, uh, that can be done, but you have to open Bluetooth, so it's a little bit messy for most of the people. Biometrics, that's a good actually uh, topic that you mentioned, uh, because it o over steps over to the privacy issues as well, because that, that's a, a very important issue, yeah. even in China as well. Now, uh, going back to the commercial mall there, uh, we try to actually do it, so installing eye beacons, but the fact is, it's very difficult to collect the data because people have to actively open the, the app first. Uh, of course, you can have different marketing kind of a solution or the incentive to actually make them open the app, but then again, will they open the app all the time, and when they move, can it be actually tracked? Uh, it's something that commercial malls always wanted, uh, all the brands all, all, always wanted because it's indoors, we know, know that, oh, this customer came to my place and then went to my competitor for a longer time period. So these are the kind of data analytics that these brands will be willing to actually buy or use this kind of technology. The fact is, so far we haven't seen anything that actually closely remotes to it. Uh, Alibaba, I think it's Alibaba actually threw up something similar for the malls mm -hmm. as a solution, but so far I haven't seen anything yet. Biometrics, that's a more tricky thing because you still have to have data to compare with the original thing. So, so far visual recognition, biometrics, uh, thumbprint or facial recognition, I still haven't seen anything that's closely remote to like 
what you see in the movies, uh -huh. where you can actually, hey, uh, walk, in a walk into a place and you can actually scan, okay, this is Desert Marshall. So <laughs> it's kind of scary, actually. Yeah. But, but the technology is moving towards that area. Yes. So we're, 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 we're hopeful that towards one day we will have that kind of technology, <coughs> but once we have the technology, then it comes to the legislation, the policies that there is. Are we collecting the data legally? And will people be saying, hey, I want to opt this thing out? It's like going back to the email era, where people say, hey, this is an email file, I want to opt out. So we have different policies, different legislations controlling over there. So if we have biometrics, it's like, I know what you ate last night. Yeah. And it's kind of scary. Well, I think in, in some sense, the technology is already there. Like, uh, uh, for example, uh, the company just mentioned they, they, are, they are going to cooperate with one of the other company, they actually do, they track like more than uh, 80,000, maybe close to 100,000 apps. Uh, so basically, they, their, their SDK is inside of each and every one of this uh, like almost 100,000 apps. So once, that means that like you, you yourself will probably have at least one of their apps installed, right? So people usually don't turn the Wi-Fi off, right? So now, when, now right now we know who you are, and we, we know where to, where did you go last time. <laughs> so anyway, so that that's so I think the legislation will be needed like to regulate how people really use this kind of data because a lot of like privacy issues goes around it. Yeah. Yes. I think aside from the privacy issues, I think there's also a question of ethics as well. Yes. Because um, I mean, basically, I you know I just heard recently there's a, a medical startup who are now just being partnered with a major insurance company, whereby you know people who subscribe to certain medical insurance policies can choose to um, get their DNA basically analysed. I think pretty much for free or very low kind of cost, and then they get customised kind of medicine or advice on what kind of medicine because. You know, the, the customized medicine is, is a, a growing trend as well. And, um, you know, obviously you want to get medicine that works more effectively at levels that suit your DNA better. So people are actually opting in and saying, well, I really want to find out about this. But potentially, when you've got a major insurance company saying, um, you know, I've got this, this information and maybe I, I basically charge your insurance premiums a lot higher. This, this, the, the question of, of at what, it's a lot about a grey area, I think, with this whole big data business. And I think as investors, it's not a case of just looking at a privacy issue, but maybe just stepping a little bit bigger and looking at the, the ethics behind potentially this kind of this information. How is it going to be used and, and will that be backfiring on, you know, on the consumer? Yes, yes, I think uh, I agree with you. So that's, that's why when I look at com uh, companies, I really don't think, okay, you know, uh, are you going to make a very good return on it? Because more, more importantly, uh, what, whatever they are doing, are they adding value to the society, right? So if you, you, are, you, you know, we can do a lot of things which can make money, but that's not necessarily create value for the, for the society, right? And at the same time, you probably do a lot of things like which has value, but not necessarily make money right away. But uh, I think if you, if you really focusing on creating value and uh, keep doing it, and uh, I think the the financial part will come. One of the key things that uh, we look into as investors is the basic kind of business operations that you have, so buying and selling. So what kind of business are you doing? Of course, there are different kinds of business, um, and how risky are those business? So one of the things that we look into is not about how much money you want to make in the future, is how much risk you can reduce as time goes by. Because what, when you're talking about, oh, can, uh, I'm an insurance company, I'm getting all your data, your DNA as well. How is that going to affect the actual customer? Because that's the key question that we're asking. Because each and every one of us around here is unique. So maybe I say, it's OK to use my DNA. You can spread it out and let people know I clone myself. It's fine. But some people may say, hey, I don't know what you're doing. And these are things that it's like, hey, it rings a bell, it has an alarm in my head. Maybe I don't know what you're doing, so let's not even do anything at all. So it's more, more or less, there's, there's a few components inside. We're talking about customer perception as well. 
because there are different laws, regulations that can actually control this as well. The use of uh, privacy in terms of the information that you're using, of course you can have that. But then again, it's like, hey, my data is inside, how do I know it's not flowing out to a telesales company? Which happens every day, because you get in cold calls and every day. And then the government and all the other legislations we have to control more and more. But then again, it's not about how we do, not just about how we do things outside, but how your customers are being perceived, are, are perceiving this kind of business is going along here. So it's more long term. Ethics, of course, privacy, of course, but it's more like a long term how the general public or your group of audience is thinking towards what you are doing. Because if you're coming out and people say, hey, I know you're ethical, I know that when you say you're going to burn my data, you're going to burn my data, then I'm going to trust you if I really need that kind of service. But if, like I said, you have to have all these components all linked up together before that customer will say, I'm going to put money into your company. So that affects how we as investors think about how risky this kind of business is. Because like what we said, especially in the medical area, where when, when we say about big data, yeah, you can grab all the data you can have right now, but once you get famous, the government, the different legislations, different uh, organizations will become pounding at you and checking up on you, doing compliance and doing everything. So are you safe enough that you have the process, the strategy all in place in the first hand and not get caught at the very back? Yeah, so I think along that side, actually, we, we can look into certain technology which might be, you know, might be a good uh, opportunity to invest because, for example, like when you talk about privacy issues, right now the blockchain technology, maybe, uh, maybe something can help because, uh, you know, my, my understanding is like if you use it right, then you can actually uh, encrypt the signal, you know, information only for intended people, right? So you actually can and doing business directly with another one without intermediary. So this is uh, something, I think there's a lot of potential of that.